We've just begun a brand new beautiful year, 5783, and it begins with a bang. It begins with the month of Tishrei. And this month is a paradox, because on the one hand, it's a glorious celebration where we're all anointing the King in our life, that is Hashem. And we have a chance to celebrate this reality again, to reinvigorate that feeling of being led by the ultimate shepherd. And not that I'm the one who's causing my life, but that I am actually the experiencer of my own life, not the cause of it. And Hashem is the cause of all causes. However, on the other hand, it's taught in Kabbalah and Hasidut that the month Tishrei is out of order. Because if you look at the letters of Tishrei, it's spelled Taf, Shin, Resh, Yud. If you look at the Hebrew alphabet, it's backwards. Because the Hebrew alphabet goes from Aleph to Taf, but if you look at the letters of the word Tishrei, they're spelled in reverse order. Taf, and then a Shin comes before that, a Resh comes before that, and a Yud is first out of those four in the Hebrew alphabet. It's completely out of order. And Rav Natan has explained thus far that the concept of locusator is the concept of ego. When does a person feel out of order? When does a person feel lack of touch with what's going on around him in a way which settles his mind, in a way which fills his soul? It's when he feels that he is the king. When he or she feels that she is the cause of all that's taking place in her life, instead of allowing herself to be led by the creator of reality, then they start to feel out of order. But Rabbi Nachman's Chiddush, which Rav Natan is bringing over, is that actually feeling out of order can be an amazing thing if we allow it to be. What do I mean by that? What's the point of creating a, a possibility that one of Hashem's children, one of us, actually feels completely out of order? The answer of Natan brings is based on something very deep that Rabbi Nachman speaks about. That is, that feeling out of order is the greatest impetus for speaking to Hashem. That in fact, the whole reason why we get to experience feeling out of sorts, disconnected, or bamboozled by life, is only so that we can speak about it. You know, it's a phenomenal thing because in the world of speech, and uh, talk therapy, this is the entire wave that we're speaking to a therapist, we're speaking to a counselor about what we're going through, and through doing so, we heal. Now, the way we think about it is that we're going to talk about our situation in order that we should process it, and through doing so, we start to feel better about what's going on in our life maybe even get guidance, depending on what type of therapist it is. However, we're learning something much deeper according to Kabbalah. That is that the whole reason for feeling out of sorts in the first place is only so that we can elevate this um, psycho-spiritual reality called out of order and reconnect it to Seder, to order, via the communication to Shem of that experience. So I'll just give like a very basic um, example of this. My car is very old. Baruch Hashem, thank God, it functions. But the, sometimes things in the car stop working. So for instance, the door on the right side and the passenger side, it's not closing. And as a result of that, the electricity in the car is off. So my car is locusator. It's not working correctly. And it's causing everything in the car to not work properly. So, I can either think about oh man, we need a new car, even though maybe we can't afford one. Or like, who got us this car in the first place? Or why did I even come to this place where I need to drive a car like this? And, uh, or, you know, I brought this already to the mechanic a million times, and how is it still not fixed, and I have to bring it back again, right? And I can go into a whole spiraling out of negative thoughts and negative emotions, and even lash out at other people, all because my door is not working. However, Rabbi Nachman is teaching that the whole purpose of the door not working, of this feeling of being out of order, 
is so that I can talk to Hashem about my broken door. And via speaking to Hashem about this broken door, I am taking the fragmented aspects of my life, the broken shards of this um, disjointed reality, which is the physical world and our life experiences, and I'm reattaching it to complete unity, to complete oneness, to wholeness, to Seder, to order. And by attaching that which is disordered, what Rav Nachman has spoken about is referred to as Chava, and attaching it to that which is ordered, what Rabbi Nachman speaks about as being called Adam, through doing so, Chava heals because she becomes subsumed within Adam, just like a husband and a wife. Or put more simply, when I take brokenness and I attach it to oneness, the brokenness dissolves in the oneness and it actually becomes um, whole through the attachment to the one. So how do I affect a unity of that which is broken? How do I make whole that which is fragmented? I do that through the vehicle of speech. I talk to Hashem about what's going on in my life. I speak about the brokenness. And that's what allows all of the brokenness to come together and to become whole, to become healed. So what did I do? How did I approach my broken door? I said to Hashem, Hashem, I don't know how to fix this door. And every time I get this car fixed, there's another problem that comes up. So obviously, you want me to do something different. What do you want me to do? You want me to crown you as the king. How could I crown you as the king right now? Ask you, Hashem, please help me to fix this door. I don't know how to do it. I'm not handy. I struggle with mechanical things. But this door is only broken because you want it to be. You want me to have a low Kaseder experience so that I can allow it to be Beseder in order by attaching it to unity, to oneness, to pure love, to you, by speaking to you about it. So that's what I'm doing right now. And I really need your help. Hashem, please help me to fix this door. And all of a sudden, as I was saying this prayer, as I was driving, the door like unhinged. <laughs> and I parked the car after, and right after I parked the car, I said, Hashem, please help me to close this door. Help me to close this door. I brought it out. It looked like it was getting worse. And then I slammed it in. And Baruch Hashem, the door closed completely. And my wife told me yesterday she was working on it for a long time and she couldn't close it at all. Thank God. So Baruch Hashem, obviously this is a, this is a good example and this is a convenient example because it worked. But even let's say for instance, it doesn't work and the door doesn't, doesn't fix. It's not the point. Because the whole point of the broken door itself is just to get me to talk to Hashem about it. Because listen to what Rav Natan says now. This that we see that there are times that a person goes and his life is locusader. His experience is not in order. It's all being drawn from this malchut experience, this female dimension of spiritual reality called Chava, where things feel out of sorts. But the truth is, there's nothing wrong with Chava. She's perfect. Like a Jewish woman says every morning, that you made me perfect. That's literally the bracha. Right? A man has to say that you didn't make me like this, you didn't make me like this. A woman, a Jewish woman, actually says that you made me perfect, just like you created me to be. So then what's the problem then? The problem is when you disattach Loka Seder from Seder. When you disattach Chava from Adam, there is no problem with Chava. There is no problem even with being Loka Seder. The only problem with being out of order is when you're not attaching it to the reality which is in order, which is Hashem. And by disattaching Chava from Adam or from our broken experience from the oneness of Hashem, through doing so, this is where all of the suffering in our life comes from. 
the Iker Pagam, and Rav Nachman speaks about, and Rav Natan is now expounding, where is the essence of this blemish? What's causing me to separate, to disassociate, to create a fissure between lo Kaseder and Kaseder, between Chava and Adam, between the brokenness or the challenges in my life and the unity which draws life force into those lackings and gives it wholeness. What am I doing that's causing that breakage? Why is there not a straight line of life force being permeated into the lackings in my life? Because what we're learning is something amazing. There's no problem with the lackings. There's no problem with Chava. There's no problem with not being Kaseder. We're supposed to be like that. The problem is when there is a lack of life force being drawn into those lackings. And what's causing me to have that disassociation? Where is that disconnect coming from? Ayyadeh Gadlut, through arrogance. Shomer Ani Emloch, that we're saying either consciously or subconsciously or sub subconsciously, I rule. Shibazehu Mechalek Bechinat Chava Malchud Laatzmo, meaning that I have made Chava an entity in and of herself. Like it said about Adam, the first man that existed, he was both male and female. He had both aspects to him, and that's why he was the crown of creation. But if we take Chava and we crown her herself as being an entity in and of herself, that's what causes our suffering. By taking Malchut, meaning this physical world, and thinking it's a reality in and of itself, by seeing the natural events that take place in our life and associating them with some type of entity that exists in and of itself. So for instance, if we attribute, let's say, there was a hurricane that just took place. If we think that's happening only because of weather patterns that are ingrained into the physical world that exist in and of themselves, that there is not some higher reality which is drawing life force into that natural experience of a hurricane, we have given the hurricane a power in and of itself in our mind. And from this causes our suffering. However, when we take this locusator experience of the hurricane, and we say, even though we don't understand how this could be, but that Hashem Himself is drawing life force into the physical hurricane. That the natural order which is uh, causing or giving birth to that hurricane to exist, when we realize that it's coming from Hashem, so as a result of that, we have reattached that which is not in order to that which is in order. We have reconnected Chava to Adam. We have not anointed the hurricane as king. We have not anointed uh, science as king. We understand that scientific realities are only a manifestation of something which is sublime, something which is divine, something which is transcendent. And simply by speaking that out, we have reconnected that reality. And through this, we start to experience inner tranquility, equanimity, harmony. Because when we think that Chava or the events in our life or us ourselves, that we ourselves have a reality in and of ourselves, that we're not um, sourced in some higher reality. We separate ourselves from Hashem. Then we don't have wholeness. We don't feel inner tranquility. We don't feel harmony. Because the essence of our life force and the essence of the life force of the events in this physical world, they're all coming from this reality called Ma. What? Hainu Asseichu. The concept of Ma is the concept of consciousness. Shehu Bechina Kaseder. This is the concept of Kaseder. This aspect of Adam, this male uh, aspect of spiritual reality, this male aspect of our souls, that's the concept of mochin, of mind, of consciousness. So when our heart, which is Chava, right, our experience of life, we need to reconnect it to our mind. 
And via doing so, we draw wholeness into our hearts. Because the wholeness of all experience, of all matter, isn't except like when there is unity and connection with the event itself and Hashem. Because then the event or the circumstance or the person or the place or the time, it draws life force from that which is given birth to it. And the life force of anything is the consciousness of that thing. So we're learning something very deep. Even events that take place have a consciousness. Time itself has a consciousness. Place has a consciousness. We have a consciousness. And it's our, um, it's, it's our mission in this world, it's our mission on a daily basis to allow life force to pour into all aspects of reality, events, space, time, us, ourselves. We do that by reconnecting it to Hashem. And when we reconnect it to Hashem, then so to speak, Hashem can pour life force into that thing and it could function properly. It could be healthy. And that thing which it's pouring in is called chokhmah, wisdom. Because it says in Tikkuni Zohar, which Rabbi Nachman alluded to is even deeper, it's coming from an even higher place in the Zohar itself, it says that chokhmah is the words koach ma, the ability of what? Koach means strength or ability or potential. Ma means what? Whatness. Shu ikar chiyut. So here's an unbelievable thing. When am I going to feel life force? I'll only feel life force when I have wisdom. What is the greatest wisdom of all? To know, ani lo yodea. I don't know anything. What is that called? I don't know anything. Ma. What? What? If we have an experience of what that takes place in our life, not I know, but ma, what? We have now made ourselves a vessel for actually knowing. By not, by understanding that we don't know, we can actually begin to know. By saying ma, what? We are drawing life force into that thing. Because Shalom Melech says in Kohelet, that chokhmah gives a life force to its owner. And Rabbi Nachman brings down in the first Torah of Lekut Imran, all life force is wisdom. And this is the secret of the Pasuk that we say every morning, that Hashem created everything bechokhmah, with wisdom. Meaning to say, not just that Hashem created everything with a higher reasoning, but that that higher reasoning itself is its life force. And now Rabbi Nachman's teaching that the ability for that thing to draw its life force, to draw its higher wisdom into itself, is by first knowing that it does not have a re reality in and of itself. It doesn't have kingship. I don't rule. You don't rule. When we are able to come to terms with that, we begin to allow the one who does to pour life force into us. Bechinat ma, the concept of ma. Like we say every morning, ma chayenu, what is our life? Ma kochenu, what is our strength? And the simple understanding of this pasuk is we're saying, really, what are we? You know, what do we have to offer? What is our life besides the one that you give us? What is our strength besides the strength that you give us? But now we're reading it in the affirmative. Ma chayenu, ma is our life. Ma kochenu, ma is our strength. This concept of Ma is our life itself. And we know that the gematry of Ma is Adam. Aleph, Dalet, Mem, 45. It's the same gematria as Ma. So Adam, before the Chet, when he was connected to Chava, he was living in a state of Ma. And as long as Chava was connected to Adam, then everything was working properly. The life force of Hashem was flowing through them and they were living in Gan Eden. And we see that as soon as Adam was separated from Chava, 
that was when the Nachash came in. That was when the force of negativity was allowed to fester into the experience uh, of Adam and Chava, of us in our personal lives. It only comes up when there's a separation between Chava and Adam, when there's a separation between the events that take place in our life and the cause of those events. Nimsa, consequently, this concept of Chava, which is Malchut, kingship, when, when she's connected to Adam, meaning Ma, that I understand I don't control my life, I have no kingship of my own, any influence I have is an influence that Hashem gave me. Hashem rules, I don't rule. That's the higher consciousness of Ma. Meaning I understand that Hashem is ruling. As I yesh la shlemut, then chava is whole. Then we experience wholeness because we have reattached our disjointed, our fragmented experiences of our life to the unity which causes those experiences. The unity which we call Hashem, the Ein Sof, the Endless One. Then there's wholeness. V'zehu la Hashem ha'aret m'la'ah. Like we say in this parak of Tehilim, which is very connected to Rosh Hashanah, which is very connected to the beginning of this year, which we say on the first day of the week, which was today, that Hashem to the le- is to the land and fills it. And we know that according to Kabbalah and Chassidut, the land is also a code word for our physical body. Just like a person is called an Olam Katan, it's called a small world. So too, our body is called a land. So when Hashem is telling us to conquer the land, He's really telling us to conquer our lower selves, to conquer our egos, to conquer our body. And when we understand that we are not the king of our body, but Hashem is the king, when we don't allow uh, our limited physical senses to rule, but we choose our higher consciousness to be the sole decider of what our body does. That we understand that we're a soul and we have a body, not that we're a body and we have a soul. Then through doing so, we allow ma, meaning our mind, to then infuse the land, meaning our body. And then Hashem fills the land, meaning our consciousness fills our body. And then it's filled with life force. And then it goes to him to a person, Kaseder. Then things in his life start to go in order. He doesn't feel that chaos. He doesn't feel that strife. He doesn't feel that disharmony. Why? Because he has reoriented himself to reality. Ani lo meluch. I don't rule. Hashem does. And this is great. Because as soon as I uh, mavato myself to this reality, that I am simply the vehicle of reality, I am not the cause of my reality, I'm not the rider, I'm the vehicle, then I can experience the wonders of this world, I can experience the miracles of my life. I allow the rider to ride through me. And when I do so, I get to experience harmony. I get to experience inner tranquility. I get to experience equanimity. And it is all drawn from the life force that comes from my conscious choice to speak out to the one who created me about the different challenges of my life, about the brokenness of my life. By speaking out to Shem about it, I am acknowledging that I can't fix this thing because I didn't cause this thing. Only Hashem can fix this thing. Because only Hashem creates. And I can co-create with Him by allowing Him to facilitate through me, through my conscious um, understanding that I am not the King. That's called Ma. I'm connecting my being, which is Chava, with Adam. Conscious understanding that I don't understand. Ma. What? 
And that's kochenu, that's my strength. Ma chayenu, that's our life force. Ki batar de'itachar nuk lo it kartaman. Because in the place that there is maleness, it says that the female doesn't exist in that place. What is this speaking about? So it's brought down in the Zohar HaKadosh that we're talking about spirituality right now. That the concept of um, manyness, the concept of fragmentation, the concept of a lacking, it only exists in and of itself when there is no male figure. Because what's the concept of maleness spiritually? It's that which fills the female lacking. Just like in the physical act of intimacy, uh, a male is, is uh, filling a female lacking, right? He's giving over and she is receiving. So too, this is um, reflecting a spiritual paradigm. Because in relationship between us and Hashem, Hashem, so to speak, Kivichol is like Adam, and we are like Chava, because we receive from Hashem. We don't give. He gives. When do we get to experience that giving? When we mavatal ourselves to Him. When we acknowledge that we are not ruling, He does. And when we acknowledge that He rules and I don't, then I become subsumed in His oneness. My disunity becomes subsumed in His unity. My fragmentation becomes uh, melted away within His oneness and His unity. So, so to speak, my femaleness, my lackings, they disappear in His maleness, meaning His giving. Nimsa, consequently, just like Chava is locusator, she becomes nullified within Adam, within Kaseder. Bechina Kaseder Nikra Yud. And the concept of Kaseder is called the letter Yud. Shamachud Nikra Dalit. Late lo Megarma Klum. Because it says in the Zohar Akadosh that the Malchut, or a person's speech, the female aspect of the soul, she has nothing of her own. And she is uh, connected to the letter Dalit. Whereas Adam, or the concept of Kaseder, this life force which infuses your reality, this is the concept of the letter Yud. So we have Yud and we have a Dalit. The Yud is the life force and the Dalit is the receiver of that life force. And the Chiddush of the Zohar is the Dalit has no light of its own, has no reality of its own. So just to bring this mashal, this, this comparison into uh, practicality, Rabbi Nachman gives the example of the sun and the moon. The sun in this case is like the Yud. It's a light in and of itself, and it draws life force into all that's around it. The moon, even though it appears to have a light of its own, it's merely reflecting the light of the sun. So in that sense, the moon is like the letter Dalit. And Hashem draws life force, which is the wisdom, which is the letter Yud. And this Yud, how is it spelled? Yud Vav Dalit. If you spell it the letter Yud, it's actually spelled Yud Vav Dalit. So you'll notice the beginning of the letter is a Yud. Then there's a Vav. And then there's a Dalit at the end. However, if we think that physical reality has existence of its own, that we ourselves rule our lives, that we are creating reality, then what we're doing is we're separating the moon from the sun. We're separating Chava from Adam. We're separating uh, this vessel which has no light of its own from the source of its light. Meaning, if you take the letter Yud and you spell it out, you have Yud Vav Dalit. Meaning, when is the Dalit perfect? The Dalit is perfect when it's subsumed within this Yud. However, the world has a way of tricking us. 
and making us think that there is no Yud in the beginning of that. There's just Dalit. There's just the female. There's just the vehicle, not the rider. We don't see the life force which is pouring in. So we think the Dalit or the female aspect of our soul or the female aspect of life, the different experiences that are taking place, they have a life of their own. The world has a way of misleading us to believe that naturally. And it's our job, especially as Jews, that we're able to uh, gaze, like Rabbi Nachman says, deeper and to understand that every Dalit has a Yud which is giving life force into it. Just like uh, a Dalit itself is the last letter of Yud when it's spelled out. And this is the secret of the Basuk that King David says, Achor vekedem tzartani kapecha. Back and front you formed me. And you placed on me your hand. Don't read kapecha your hand. Rather read kafecha your cuff. Why? Because if you take the letter yud and you spell it out, which is yud vav dalit. So if you add those letters together, what's the gematria? Yud is ten, vav is six, and dalit is four. 10 plus 6 plus 4 is 20, which is the gematria of Chaf. But that's only when you connect the Dalit to the Yud, when you connect Chava to Adam. But what happens when you disconnect Chava from Adam? What happens when you think that things have a life in and of itself? What happens when you don't talk to Hashem about the brokenness of your life? Then it goes into an experience, an operation of not being in order. And therefore it goes without being in order. Meaning, So very simply put, this month of Tishrei has a, a phenomenal capacity for us that we are able to anoint Hashem King in our life. However, the only way it can do so is by us experiencing the opposite of that. By having brokenness, by having challenges, by going through difficulties on whatever level we experience it, whether it's within ourselves, whether it's in relationships, whether it's in a physical mundane reality, whatever these challenges are, but the point of the challenge itself is only to give us the ability to speak it out to Hashem, to turn Chava into a vehicle of connection, not to think that Chava or my disordered life is existing in and of itself, but I'm going to reconnect Chava to Adam. I'm going to reattach my speech to my mind. I'm going to reconnect the events of my life with the life force which is giving birth to those things. That is how I anoint Hashem King in my life. But that's why Tishrei is spelled backwards. Because this month is going to be a month in which it's going to be locusator. The reason is because that is the most unbelievable opportunity for us to anoint the Shem King. Because when things are going perfect, we don't need to anoint the Shem King because we see that He's doing everything. Our work is in the times and the experiences where we don't see it. And then we have to force ourselves to reattach the disunity of our life to the unity of Hashem through speech. That is what allows Chava to become encompassed within Adam. That's what allows all dimension of reality to be united. And then things go from loka Seder back to Seder. And therefore when a person sees his life is moving out of order, things in his life are not moving harmoniously, his inner world is not one of peace and harmony. And for sure, his, uh, the events that are taking place in his life are chaotic. Yeda he should know, she lo gadlut. He has arrogance. Hainu ani loch. There's still some vestige of belief within him or her that she rules, that I rule, that he rules, that he is the source of reality or that events in the world take place in and of themselves 
even if the person doesn't think that consciously, there's some level of thought within that person, even if it's subconscious, that I rule, that I'm the king. And the only reason Hashem is causing him to feel out of order is so that he can reconnect it back to Seder. He does that through tshuva. He does that by humbling himself. He does that by saying, Ma, what? I don't know. I can't do this. Hashem, I need your help. Like Moshe and Aaron said, V'nachnu ma, what are we that we should lead the Jewish people out of exile? What are we that the Jewish people are asking us for help? What are we? But what they mean is, Ma nachnu. Because we don't think that we run the world, because Moshe and Aaron were firmly un, uh, entrenched in this higher level of consciousness that Hashem is creating through us, then Ma Nachnu. Why are they coming to us? Because we're at the level of Ma. We have the ultimate level of humility. And because of that, we're in order. So the Jewish people who are not Seder, because they still have arrogance, they're coming to us to be the, the facilitators of reality, to be able to lead them back to Hashem, to be able to lead us back to a good life. And then Chava is brought back to Adam. The concept of Ma. And then Chava, which is low Seder, she is made to Seder, to order. The Iker Teshuva and the essence of Tshuva, of return, Hu Bechodesh Elu, is in the month of Elu, which just passed. Ein Sham Kohetev. So, just to encapsulate what we have said, Rabbi Nachman is teaching us a very deep phenomenon, something very precious, something very important. When things in our life are not going well, when we're struggling, when we feel out of sorts, it's because we have some degree of arrogance, even if it's very, very, very hidden under the radar. And that arrogance itself is disconnecting ourself and the events in our life from the source of those events, from the source of ourself. And once anything is disconnected from its source, it loses its life force. It starts to look out of order. It starts to look broken. It starts to look disjointed. So Rabbi Nachman saying, what do we need to do? We need to do teshuva. How do we do teshuva? By realizing that we don't rule. By realizing that we are not the king. By saying ma, what? By simply acknowledging that I don't have an answer. And I want an answer from the one who does. Through doing so, I reattach the events in my life, which is called Chava, which is locusator, to that which is one, to that which is whole, to that which is united, which is Hashem, which in this case we're calling Ma. What? By drawing Ma into our life, we have now brought life force into the events in our life. We are reattaching that which has fallen in this world, that which has fallen in our hearts, back to the creator of reality, back to the source of existence. And in doing so, we create unity. So whenever we feel that things are locusator, they're not in order, do a quick check. Do I believe right now that I run the world? And even if you say no, think deeper. Because Rabbi Nachman says that if you look deep enough, you're going to find that you still haven't given up on some vestige of belief that you're the king. Because if you fully mavatal yourself to the one who is actually the king, then as a result of that, automatically your life will go back from not in order to order. From disorder to harmony. Bezrat Hashem, we should all experience tremendous levels of tshuva right now because we have an amazing ability in these 10 days to do real tshuva, meaning to understand I don't rule. And it's great because now I let the one who does to rule. 
and then my life could be harmonious.